at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, let it go. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, let it go. I can't help it if y'all don't like to talk to your neighbor. You're the one that chose them today. You go talk to your neighbor. Let it go. Say, let it go. Let it go. I'm going to let go of the chain to all the blame. That's what I'm going to title today. Chained to what you blame. Chained to what you blame. I lived my whole life letting the enemy lie to me and tell me all these lies until I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I realized nobody's coming to get me. People I thought had my back didn't have my back. Why? Because God wanted to make sure that nobody got the credit for what he was about to do in my life when I finally got my act together. Say, today, I'm breaking the chain to everything that I blame. Is that good or what? Listen to me. You have to break it before it breaks you. I need to say that again, don't I? You got to break it before it breaks you. Well, too late, Kim. I'm already broken. No, you're still here. You are still here. But I think a lot of times we don't look at how far we've come. We just look at how far we got to go because we fell again. I used to be one of those people that I would get it together and then I would fall. And then I'd be like, well, already messed up. Might as well tie another one on. And it was like the enemy was saying, let me just keep knocking you down lower and lower and lower and lower. Because then you have so far to go. But listen to me. You have to break it before it breaks you. What does that mean? You can break it as long as you still got a pulse. When you finally realize the power that you possess... I got a power. And I'm getting up today. And devil, you're going to wish to God you would have taken me out. Because I'm about to show up at Thanksgiving completely different. I'm about to show up. They, they ain't ready for this. They've been sleeping on me. I hope they got the rest. Because I'm getting up free. I'm getting up free. I'm getting up free. I'm not going back to who I used to be. You can talk about me all you want. I might have did everything they said I did. I might be delayed my, pro my progress. But today... I serve a God that's like a time machine. When I finally get it together, he said, I already knew. I already knew. November 2023, you were going to get up again. You were going to take back your power. And I'm going to take you and elevate you from the back of the line to the front of the line. I'm going to repackage you, baby. Why? Because you made it. You made it. over dignity. I made it. I did it, but I made it. God has a way of even giving you back your youth. Do you hear me? He will give you back your youth. He will give you restitution. What does restitution mean? Seven times greater than what I lost. Seven. I don't want what I lost because I lost to Anne Marie. I want seven times greater. Tell your neighbor this Jesus is a healer. Come on, tell your neighbor, Jesus is a healer. You better say it loud today because some of you forgot. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my antidote. Jesus is my drug. Jesus is my Red Bull. When others walk out, Jesus walks in. Because he knew before I ever came out of that little woman, he knew on August the 29th, I was going to come out butt first, and I was going to come out, and the doctor's going here, ah! but hell, her purpose, destiny, a game changer, that's you. He 
spoke to me this week. He said, you tell Limitless, this year you will finish strong. I said I wasn't going to scream because I got a good word. He said, you will finish strong. Y'all ready for this? Listen to me. It's your job to trust Jesus. It's his job to show up. It's your job. You cannot go through life fear and faith. You can't have both. It's your job to trust Jesus. It's his job to show up. Listen to what Isaiah 55, 8 says. I'm going to go 55, 8 through 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and his thoughts are higher than so if you're living here you ain't prophesying this scripture if you're over here living in lack you don't believe you're worth more you're living in loveless relationships it's because you don't realize that you are love that you have the capability as a child of God to change the trajectory of your life at any given second. What does that mean? Swallowing your pride, living in humility, allowing yourself to stop regurgitating and start praising your way out. What does that mean? That means anytime anything is being birthed in the spirit, there's always like an earthquake before in your life. Before you ever go into another, it's almost like a spaceship. And you can be in Florida and feel when the spaceship goes into orbit. Because of the magnitude of that thing going into another realm of the earth. That's the same thing with you. Nothing is ever birthed by, oh, just feels so good. Anytime. That you're about to go into another sphere. This is why you got to stop saying stuff like, I wish God didn't trust me so much. He does. But a lot of times we're so used to living in lack that we become okay living there. Our mamas lived it. Our daddies lived it. And so now we're living it. We live in it. we just a generational curse. Did you know a generational curse is broken when you make up in your mind, I ain't staying here. You had two brothers living in the same family. One turns out just like his dad, crazy. The other one turns into the best father on the planet. Never had the example. But one made a choice and one chose to live the lie. It's the same thing with us as children of God. We are not like them. We are not like they. That's when people start telling you, oh, you know, your uncle, he died of this. He died of that. Somebody else in my family died of dementia the other day. And somebody else in my family said, Lord, we got to break it. I said, shoot, my daddy took one for our team. You got to realize that I'm not living in fear because what you fear, what? Huh? What you fear comes upon you. Now, fear is false evidence appearing real. Why? Because God is nowhere in fear. Fear. Ah, praise camp. Here's what God said. You got to live as though you've never missed it. You never missed it. You never made a bad decision. You got to live as though you never missed it. You got to make decisions like you've never missed it. I'm not scared. I ain't scared to get married again. Because I got better. I got better. I'm not scared to go after that job just because I lost this job because I was late on my time clock. I got better. I got better. You got to live as though, because if you don't, you'll live in lack because you're afraid. I'm afraid of being rejected again. I'm afraid of encountering another devil. 
I'm afraid of missing it. I would rather hold on to this $400 that I have each week than go after that promotion because the last promotion I went after for, it stuck me. It just, it's just changed. The enemy will do it so that you stop having faith for the next season. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the way he does it is through your mind and through fear. Fear of going back and having to face what I faced before. So now I'm going to put myself in this little box. And I'm going to struggle. Because at least I got something right now. It ain't enough. But you will stay there. Because you're afraid. And God is saying to you, live as though you never missed it. Make decisions as though you never made a bad mistake. Because listen to me, we all wish to God that we have done some things differently. But if I went back and redid it, Paris, I think all the time. I get asked this question all the time. It's because everybody knows I was screwed up. If you could go back and tell the 24-year-old Kim something of wisdom, what would you tell her? I said, I'd tell her, do it all. Do everything the same. Just do it quicker. <laughs> because if I went back and took all my mistakes back, I wouldn't have this. Because when I was walking through my hell and everybody was talking about me, I got free from you. I got free from you. <laughs> and people please, and then what people think about us is the one thing that keeps us back. And before we know it, what's on them jumps on us. They, they cooties jump right on us. Oh, I'm going to show them. When you walk through hell and you come out on fire, <laughs> ah! you like, go on and shove me in the, just stab me in the front. You ain't got to do it in the back. Just do it right on in the front. Because I realize it didn't kill me before. It ain't going to kill me. Yeah. We are able to look at our lives as though we never missed it because of the blood. The blood of Jesus completely annihilates it as though it never happened. Well, I feel it happening because you keep talking about it. I feel like it's there because you keep nursing it. You sleeping with it at night? You talking about it to everybody? And you're desperate now. And desperation is not attractive. You almost like the attention being broken gets you. And so now because that's all you're used to, you ever see those people that call anybody got those people you call that call you on your phone? And they're calling you and you're like, ugh. Y'all, anybody, or just me. You're just like, man, I don't even want you to call me. You driving me nuts. What you keep talking about, I gone through way worse. And I'm still standing. Well, how did you do it, girl? I didn't have a choice. I couldn't give up. So you got to live. And some of y'all getting free today. Because you keep going back to the shoulda, couldas, and wouldas. You keep living and trying to fix your past. And you can't fix your past. Now your past has made you mean. And you're like, man, I don't even know how to get out of this, Kim, because now I've just been here for so long. you got to begin to talk to yourself. you got to live your life as though you never missed it. Why? Because that's how the blood treats us. That's why every time I see these Pharisee people judging everybody, you know those people? They loved you a lot until you messed up. And now when you see them in the grocery store, you see them running. Because it's almost like you got cooties. They can't talk to you. Because if they seen talking to you, and sometimes the reason people can't talk to you in public is because of how they talked about you behind your back. They can't, they, 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 can't, they can't even talk to you in your face because they're afraid because of all they said about you. And when you realize that God allows it so it can keep building you. Why? Because your character is going to keep you in a place of humbleness. In a place of as long as I ain't dead, God, you ain't done. Listen, seasons that you are hidden in is the seasons that God is building your faith. I want you to think about a season right now. Think about a season where you feel like you, anybody feel hidden right now? You feel hidden? Anybody feel hidden? I feel hidden. I, I, the reason I like you to raise your hands is because the enemy's a liar, and he likes to tell us that we're the only ones hidden. And I just want you all to see how 80% of the church feels hidden and alone. And that alone devil will call, cause you to keep repeating the same patterns with different faces. 
because you don't feel worthy of anything better, right? So I've even been guilty in some seasons of my life where I have uncovered myself in a season that I was supposed to be hidden because it wasn't happening quick enough. And when I finally got to that place where I realized there was a lesson in everything that I'm going through and I got to allow myself, I need my attitude fixed. I need my spirit fixed. And until I allow myself to get these places in me healed, that he'll keep letting it happen in my life because he knows I can handle it and he knows I'm a fighter. But I got to get to a place where I don't lay in it longer than I need to. So I began to practice probably about four years ago. I began to practice that every time something came at me, I would bounce back like this. It, in, the, in, in the spirit, I would see myself sliding down the back of the door. But it lasted two minutes. Because I realized I got this rule that you got three minutes. Three minutes. They're going to talk about you. They're going to be ugly to you. But you got three minutes to decide, am I letting it get inside me? Or am I going to let it bounce off of me? Because once I let it get inside me, it starts to become an infection. And then what's on them gets on me. That's why some of you ain't free. Because you've allowed what they had on them to get on you. And did you know you don't bother people that don't like you? So all those memes that you've been posting for that one person, they don't, they're not even looking at your profile. We're all having to listen to your memes. We're like, God, I don't even know what she's going through. But man, it was when I started realizing that most of the stuff I was posting, by Felicia, one day I was in my prayer closet, about to go into a new year, and I heard the Lord say, uh, I would like for you to get delivered from cleaning out your friend list every other day. Because obviously you got a problem with picking your friends. Because everybody hates on you all the time. And that's all you're talking about is haters. And I'm the kind of God that redeems. So every time you're saying, bye, Felicia, those people that you're saying it to ain't even watching you. Because they don't like you. And when you get to a place where you realize everybody ain't going to like you, and that's okay because you don't like everybody. Ain't that freeing? I don't like everybody, and it's okay if you don't like me. I ain't going to let it get inside me, and I'm going to love you. I'm going to send you a box lunch. You ain't sitting at my table, though. <laughs> right? Listen, we're going to talk today. I'm going to go really quickly because I got 12 minutes and 58 seconds. I started realizing when I was putting this sermon together that I had a hard time with not seeing snakes in my face, even while they were hissing. I need to say that again. I had a hard time seeing snakes in my face, even when they were hissing. Even when God would cut the grass all the way down so that I could see them. Because there was something on the inside of me that felt like I could fix everybody. And that fixing everybody caused me to be used. That's where the enemy snuck in and got me to a place where I would spend most of my time angry at the hissers and not celebrating the people that had stayed. I had a problem. And until I got, a got to a place where I stopped taking things personal. Yeah. Yeah. My mother gave me the greatest advice on the planet when I took this church over three years ago. She said, Kimberly, because it's the ones that you do the most for that will walk out on you. It's the ones that say, I ain't never going to leave you. I'm riding with you. You the one that going to leave first. And Mimi would always tell me, girl, don't take it personal. It's spiritual. Most people don't even realize they're hissing. Because of the doors that they have opened in their lives. And the enemy is using it. So today, I want to take you to the text. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Genesis 50, 15, until I get done reading. And as we're walking into Joseph's life, he's 56. He is half he is in the halftime of his life. 
making a decision about how he's going to handle his enemies that are still hissing in his face when he's got the power to ruin them. The Bible says that he will place the enemies front and center. But the problem is when we ain't got no discernment to see that they're still hissing. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to let it reverse you back to who you used to be? Are you going to realize that God just used it because you got more character than their lies? So as we walk into his life, let's read it. They haven't changed. Some of y'all are going to encounter these people at Thanksgiving. They haven't changed. They don't like you because they don't like themselves. And you're going to have to stand before them as a child of God. That mean I got to put up with it for 24 hours? Yeah. Because you may be the gift that keeps on giving to them. Listen to what it says. It says, but now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back, they said. Because most of the time the haters are trying to handle you the way they would handle you. So that's why they come to fence it. So now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him. He is 50, y'all, he is 56 years old, Joseph is at this time. He's going to show us and pay us back. So they sent a message to Joseph. Said, before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you. Lies. You forget you already threw me in a pit. You sold me for nothing. You could at least got some money out of me. And now you're going to lie to me and tell me that my daddy is saying to forgive you? Oh, I can imagine that internal. Joseph is, is, he is literally the goat. Because he had so many encounters where he could have allowed that infection to get in on the inside of him. And I'm sure in that prison, it was God giving him some time to get his act together. Because I'm using these promotions in your life that look like they are struggles and demise. It says, all of a sudden they're saying to him, your father died. He instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you. For their sin is treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. Now y'all got to remember, this dude is now the king. Joseph has been elevated to king and the very people that sold him out and started his demise, started the cruelty of his lineage, of his life for all those years, are standing in front of him and he's got the capability to fry them. How many of y'all always have receipts? Y'all, some of y'all just did this. I always got receipts. Your girl always got receipts. I can sink a ship. Why? Because I ain't going to hell for nobody. So when you start lying on me, I want to get on a live and I want to throw you under the bus with my millions of followers. And God will be like, go ahead. He said, remember I ate with Judas and none of the disciples even knew that he was a traitor. He's sitting here and he's thinking in his head, When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. He knew they were lying. And he wept. He didn't weep because I'm about to kill him. I'm about to kill them. I'm about to stomp. No, he wept. Because those were his brothers. How could you still lie on me? How could you still think that you could get away? You ain't learned nothing. You got to stop expecting you from other people. I see people online taking it to their lives. They talking about each other. Their kids are crying, beating on doors, and they sitting there so angry. They hate each other more than they love their kids. Because the enemy knows the power of God, of restoration and redemption, and he does not want you to get it. He's saying, can your character 
keep up with what I've put on the inside of you. Listen to this. It says, please forgive your brothers for the wrong they did to you, for their sin is treating you cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sin. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. He realized, I'm not controlled by my emotions. I'm not going to let you make me go crazy. Because I am in control of my emotions. You got to tell yourself right now, I am in control of my emotions. You got to begin to realize that God is driving you. That his blood has given you the capability to rise up and do what's right, even when what's wrong feels so much better. Getting up and walking out. Even when you have those feelings like, I just don't feel like it today. Don't talk to the face, talk to the hand. And you're walking in and people are like, uh-oh, what's going on with Annabelle today? She looks like she drank some bad, nobody should even know. You should be able to have your emotions in such control that you literally can walk in a room with so many haters and still hold your head high. Do you know how many people have sent me messages just in the last few weeks that have said the nastiest thing about me? But I let my character outlive every lie spoken about me. And they go, send me messages now. What'd you do, girl? Give them a piece of your mind? Nope. I said, love you back. Have a great life. Why? Because God will always vindicate you. In this story, it says, then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, this is my favorite part. Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? Here's, here's it. You intended to harm me. But God intended it all for the good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. You had to throw me in jail and take my coat. And while I'm in jail, I'm crying out, begging people to come in and give me vindication. And nobody does what they said they were going to do. They said they were going to save me, but they didn't save me. I bet you was having come to. I bet you he was having some come to Jesus talks in that jail. Where are you at, God? Why aren't you vindicating me? And then. Potiphar's wife wanted him because he was a bow chick of wow wow. The Bible said he was fine. And she's like, yummy. Come to mama. He said, girl, bye. He said, you ain't taking my character. He fled and she kept his coat. But she couldn't keep his character. He got thrown back in jail. Again. Some of you quit after the first time God don't show up. And he's up here building your testimony. He had to go to prison. He had to fall apart. He probably had some attitude issues. And God said, I'm going to lock you away. I'm going to hide you for a season. Because after I hide you, then I'm going to give you another coat. But this coat ain't going to be from your daddy. This coat is going to be a king's coat. And I'm going to put you in a position that if I wouldn't have allowed you to go to hell and come out on fire, you would have never been able to accomplish what I'm about to bring out in you. You had to go to hell. You had to walk it. Because God trusted you. Y'all got to remember, they didn't even recognize Joseph that first time around he was so blessed that he had Pharaoh's coat on he had a king's coat it wasn't his daddy's it was another coat that was probably way more Versace because God will always elevate you if you will let your character keep getting back up one more time. If you will take inventory and stop letting people that wake up with bad head like you, bad breath like you, that are, oh my gosh, they are so miserable. They live to mess you up. And you can kill them with kindness. Today when I was back in that office talking to my sons, 
said, I always know when my sermon's right. Because my babies will come in and be walking through it. And I'll say, babies, this is what God's saying. Take the high road. Always take the high road. Let them die. Let them die. You praying for God to kill them with the train. He like, let it go. Let it go. It took the haters to get you in a position. Hello, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hello, Daniel in the lion's den. It had to happen so that God would get you in the position that you are needed to get in. See, God always has a code for you if you keep your character right. This whole week, I've been thinking about, I did everything they said I did. I still have to lay hands on myself. Because I tell you, I'm from the south side of heaven. I'm trying to get over there with Jesus. But ever so often, you can say whatever you want to say about me. But you talk about my family. Or you talk about my people I love. I'm going to take my shoes off and my earrings. And all of a sudden, I'm going to think I'm Medea. And then God got to call me back. Do you hear me? Because when you got a great call on your life, the enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy any way he can. And you got to realize, if it left, it was a God. If it moved out, it was a God. If it happened, it was a God. If it goes against what you want, it was a God. Why? Because God has a propensity of giving you reciprocity. He's going to give you reciprocity. What does that mean? Vindication. But he can't do it if you keep talking about it. You've talked about it long enough. Ever so often, I wake up and I feel something vex in my spirit. You ever been there? It's like you just know somebody coming at you. You don't know what, but you feel it. And all of a sudden, you want to be on the wrong side of the bed. I will literally be walking around my house. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. I will literally begin to sing worship songs and praise songs that will begin to lift my spirit and let me remember that it's taken this to get me here. I'm not collapsing here. I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to get up and praise my way out. Why? Because God has a coat for me on a whole nother level if I allow it to boost me into the next atmosphere. If I keep my character, you can have my coat. You can do whatever you got to do, say whatever you got to say. If I keep my senses of whose I am, it doesn't matter who you say I am. I can go through things that would have killed someone's character. It would have taken them out, but it's getting me rebooted. Today, listen to me. You have to walk through some things that you thought was going to tear you apart in order for you to be elevated to where God wants you to go. You can't let it get in you. You got to let it get outside of you. You got to begin to prophesy over yourself. You got to begin to decree and declare over yourself. You got to begin to look in the mirror every day and stop waiting for somebody else to do it. You got to look in that mirror every day and say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the top and not the bottom. No weapon, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I was built for this. I'm a machine. I'm a machine. I'm a machine. Does it hurt? Yeah. Am I getting through it? Yeah. Am I going to walk through a bad day ever so often? Yeah. But it ain't going to keep me down. Why? Because I am the head and not the tail. Stop being a victim in something that was making you a bestseller. Stop stalking them on Facebook. Joseph had the character of a king. You have the character of a queen and a king. You got to get out of your feelings and into some healing. 
can your character outlive every lie that's ever spoken about you? Can you allow your fruit to speak for you? If you can get your head wrapped around that I am God's idea and that he's already given me the title deed. What does that mean? You ain't even got to beg for it. You ain't got to beg for great. You ain't got to beg for fame. You ain't got to beg for multi, multi millions. He said, I've given you the title deed. You are my idea. You are God's idea. And you know what God's idea is? Not walking in depression. Not living in fear. Not living in worry. You know what chain to what, you, what blame looks like? Y'all ready for this? Bitterness. Divorce. Bondages. Depression. Feeling overlooked feeling lost you got control issues every single time somebody says something you don't like you feel like your insides are coming out you go ratchet not righteous you give people a piece of your mind every chance you can get no here's what you're gonna practice you ready And you are worthy. 